112.40 miles per hour. The number 18, 38-foot Donzi of adrenaline racing with Scott Conrad and Ken Bowen dominated the Super V field at 97.12 miles per hour. And the 29-foot extreme of Gary DeSusis with Shane Barrett at the throttles took the win in Super V light class at 80.96 miles per hour. Just as it is in wheeled motorsports, boat setup is critical for optimum performance. This is especially true when dealing with the fluid effects of an offshore race course. Several techniques are employed by the race teams to maximize thrust, and to tell us all about it, here's Martin Sanborn. We've heard guys talk about changing the setup for rough water conditions. Well, one of the key things they've all mentioned is they'll put spacers in the drives. Now, what a spacer is, this is a spacer on a number six Mercury Racing Speedmaster. What this spacer does, this is a one-inch spacer. It allows them to lower from the upper unit of the drive. They space the lower unit down one inch lower, which allows them to put the propeller shaft one inch lower in the water so they get a little bit more bite. They've got a little bit more skeg in the water for rough water conditions. It gives them a little bit better control. One of the other things that some teams will do, depending on how the boat handles, is they'll change their propeller direction. In a twin engine application, the team must decide if they're going to turn outboard or inboard rotation on their props. Now, a left-hand propeller is a propeller that rotates counterclockwise to move the boat forward and a right-hand propeller is one that turns clockwise in order to move the boat forward. If the right-hand prop is placed on the right side of the boat and the left-hand prop is placed on the left side of the boat, we call that outboard rotation. If the left-hand prop is placed on the right side of the boat and the right-hand prop is placed on the left, we call that inboard rotation. Now, inboard rotation generally creates bow lift and is more often seen on step-bottom configurations. It's traditionally slightly faster depending on the V-bottom configuration, but you give up a little bit of handling in certain hulls. Outboard rotation, on the other hand, creates transom lift and is more common in traditional V-bottoms. Now, while outboard rotation may be a bit slower, it's also a little bit more stable in the turns. Now, in catamarans, outboard rotation is generally faster since the boat creates its own lift in the tunnels. The bottom line, you need to test, test, and test to find out which setup works best on each boat. At virtually every offshore event, you'll see the Mercury Racing trailer. What's it all about? We're here to support the people that support Mercury Racing. People run Mercury Racing engines and drives, and that sort of, that's what we're here to make sure that they get through the weekend as flawlessly as humanly possible. We have everything from full engines to drives, transmissions, gears, gear sets, propellers, whatever could go wrong in a race course. We should be able to assist our race customers through whatever the dilemma is. From the fan perspective, we have things like Clothing, clothing apparel, mercury racing apparel, things that fans kind of like to get their hands on, and it's sort of hard sometimes to get race-specific clothing or mercury race-specific clothing, and we have a fair a variety of it here. There are problems that can develop, and fortunately or unfortunately, some of them develop immediately prior to race time. The luxury we have is that if it isn't a mechanical part that is failing or about to fail that could prevent them from starting a race, we have either the mechanical part or the expertise to correct or to assist so the racer gets to race and that's what they're here to do and the spectator gets to see the race and that's what they're here to support. But when the truck does pull into the site I think you can almost hear a collective sigh of relief from the racers and from the race fans that they say hey we know Mercury's here we're probably going to get through the weekend just fine. When we return we'll check out what's happening on the poker run circuits. Stay with us. Poker Runs America presents Performance Boat Television. Brought to you by Offshore Racing on DVD from FreezeFrameVideo.net. Performance boats are getting faster and becoming technically more sophisticated. Greg Reichman was at the Miami Boat Show where he discovered a truly high-tech device for boaters. If you own an extreme high-performance power boat, one of the things you need to think about is getting back to the dock in one piece. And, of course, we're always thinking safety first. But with David Laubner, you're with WSI now. They produce a product that's going to get you back to the dock in one piece, and it's weather-related. Tell me about the things I can know. Find out from you if I'm in my boat heading out for the day. Well, first off, it's the, the Weather Channel Marine is a satellite-delivered weather service, so we can deliver every five minutes the weather directly to your boat. The first thing you'll notice over here is this radar information. This is the WSI Now Rad. It's a quality-controlled Doppler radar product that you're probably familiar with on your local news. What this is is it updates every five minutes. And the next thing I'll show you, all these dots right here, these are uh, buoy locations. And what it'll show you is what the buoy is reporting. So I just have it on air temperature. I can have it on winds. So it'll bring up wind barbs so you can see wind direction at a given location. 
It also brings up information such as the sea states, such as the waves, the direction and the, the height. The other thing that's important to a mariner is this is all what's happening right now. We can also give you forecast information just at the click of a button. So instead of listening and waiting for a forecast, what you can do is pick an area that you may be in or going to, click on it, and that's going to bring up the most relevant forecast for that area. These go out to about five days, but it'll give you a synopsis. The other thing we can do is this is the national weather forecast that we have here. If I click on one of these red regions, those are marine advisories. So if there's been an advisory issued, because of our five-minute update cycle, we can get an advisory out to you in as little as, five, as six minutes probably. This right here is the omnidirectional antenna that we have. It's small, compact, and won't take up too much space on your boat. All you do is basically wire this to this receiver, and then you wire this into the back of your PC or compatible chart plotter. Once you get that, you turn on the system, it just automatically starts taking the data down. We do ship it with a free software application to view the weather, and this will give you the ability on any PC to run the system, get the radar, get the forecast information, and get all the data that you need. There are literally hundreds of items you can buy to do minor performance enhancements to an existing engine package in your high-performance pleasure boat. However, you may get to the point where you're just bored with the speed you can achieve, and that's the point at which you might want to consider an entire engine replacement. And one of the custom engine shops that you're going to need to talk to if that's what your decision has come to is Keith Eichert Power Products. That's what people are talking about is, is more power. But I think the other side with more power, the, the theme I keep hearing is reliability. Reliability and consistency, and that's one of the themes that uh, with our parts and stuff that we're going to bring to the table is, is that consistency. Uh, we start with a 572 cubic inch engine, 1,000 horsepower, 900 approximate foot-pounds of torque at 6,000 RPM. It's a EFI Technologies throttle body supercharged engine with a 1071. Now, research and development is key in the marine horsepower business. Nobody knows that better than Keith Eichert. You do an all-in-house program. Tell me a little about the R&D program at your shop. Absolutely. We have a super full dyno. We dyno every single one of our engines. We do constant changes to try to find out better ways to make the horsepower and make the longevity engines last longer. That's the key to any manufacturing. We believe it's number one with us. On the poker run circuits, one of the largest events this year was the National Power Boat Association's 8th annual New York City Power Boat Rally, where 143 of the country's premier performance boats stormed up the Hudson River. After an impressive patriotic parade from the Statue of Liberty to the George Washington Bridge, the fleet put the hammer down for the champion high-speed run north to the Tappan Zee Bridge. The 42-foot Outer Limit Silent Sam led the way as the official pace boat for the 100-plus mile-per-hour class, followed by Cigarette Racing Team's 46-foot American Muscle in the speedboat class. After completing the first 15-mile leg, the boats navigated the third and fourth segment of the event, the Poker Run, with stops further up the Hudson Valley at the Ossining Boat Club and Haverstraw Marina. It was then back south at full throttle to the Liberty Landing Marina, where it all began. It was no surprise that Mike Fusco's 40-foot turbine-powered skater Jet Set took the overall fastest speeds at 175 miles per hour, regaining his title as King of the Hudson. Canadian Oliver Bach's 47-foot Outer Limits Big Soldier was crowned King of the V-Bottoms, posting speeds in excess of 150 miles per hour. Vinnie Rice's 36-foot skater Color Me Bad, packing 2,000 horsepower gasoline engines, gave an impressive run and placed second behind Jet Set in the Cats. As with all poker runs, the real winners of the day were Charlie Tesoro and George Magnifico, each having a matching full house and split the $5,000 grand prize. Join us next week when we once again bring you all the action that is performance boat television. We'll see you then.